Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique. And this is the first video in a series, a four part series on M Auto Dynamic EQ from Elder Production. This is one of my, if not my most favorite EQ plugins because of how versatile it is, how much control you have, and just, it just has so many features built inside of it. So I'm just gonna get started scratching the surface with four different videos. In this first one, we're gonna check out frequency masking, frequency collisions, and how to remedy those to make your mix cleaner and make one instrument or a vocal or something stand out against something else that might have similar frequencies. So let's go ahead and jump into it. What we need to do is analyze two files. One is the instrument that we want to stick out in the mix, and the other one is the one we want to carve away from certain frequencies to make room for that other element, if that makes sense. So I've got these things color coded inside of Ableton Live here. I've got a red and a green. And if you look down here, that's because that's what they're color coded here. Though I'm pretty sure you can actually change all the colors if you wanted to get into it. Uh, we're gonna stick with red and green for now. So what I have here is a flute. and the kind of synth piano sound. And there's a little bit of frequency collision happening in the upper frequency of this piano that's masking or getting in the way of the flute. And what I wanna do is use M Auto Dynamic EQ to find those positions and have it automatically add a filter node to reduce the frequency in the synth itself. So let's go ahead and do that. The first thing we wanna do is analyze the source. The source is, in this case, what we want to stick out in the mix. And I have it, or the M Auto Dynamic EQ, on that flute channel, okay? If I play the flute, that's what we're seeing here. So what I wanna do is hit Analyze and let that play. But before I do that, I wanna point out that you can actually use uh, an audio file if I wanna go ahead and just import an audio file. I can analyze a sidechain signal if I wanted to. I can draw my own line. I can load a preset like pink noise if I'm using this for mixing and mastering, any of these genres. If you come in here, you've got like, you know, Young Jeezy and stuff like that in there. So some real world examples of EQ curves. But something like this is usually more for EQ matching and for mixing and mastering. So we don't need to worry about it. So I'm just going to go ahead and analyze this flute. And all I did was click analyze and now I click analyze again and now it's now baked inside of there. It's an EQ curve that's been saved and I can save that if I wanted to. And what you're looking to do here is hit the analyze button and let it play until it starts stops jumping up and down and kind of averages out the EQ curve. And that's what happened. So now I need to analyze the target. And there are a number of different ways you can do this, but one of the simplest is just to take the whole plugin and drag it on that second channel. And if I play this now, you'll see that it's coming up there. And now I just hit analyze target and let that again average out And then it averaged out, so I click Analyze again, and now I have my two frequency curves. And you can actually see that right around here, there is some competition. Now, because of how high up in the spectrum this is, it's not necessarily a terrible thing. You really wanna look out for stuff down here on the lower end where there's, you know, there's not a, as much room, wiggle room for competing frequencies. But for this particular example, this will be just fine. So what I wanna do is use the auto equalizer section. And if you don't see it, what you wanna do is click right here. You can see it says auto equalizer, click right there and you'll see the panel. And that's the same thing with the band section here and really anything else over here. Before I hit separate, which is what I'm trying to do, I want the green to not sound like the red. I want to come into settings and I want to choose how many bands this is going to add. And I can go up to seven. That's how many bands you are allowed inside of this plugin. I'm going to leave it at four for now. And we can also roll off the lower end and say, hey, you know, don't touch, don't add any bands below this frequency or don't add any bands above this frequency. So let's just do that for funsies, hit okay, and then just hit separate. 
And look what's happened here. It's added these EQ nodes. It's added four of them, in fact, as we set before. It hadn't added anything above my settings, anything above 4,000 or anything below 187, though it wouldn't have any way. That was just for kind of demonstration purposes. But it's dipped down. There's kind of a peak right here. And what I said before is we want the red to stick out more in the mix. So we're carving out frequencies of the green. You can see right here, this is definitely conflicting with this bump right here. And there's another one right here that's conflicting with that bump. And that's what it's done now. So let's just go ahead and listen to these and see if we can spot the difference. I'm gonna go ahead and solo them both and then bypass the plugin using the bypass button. So the flute is definitely sticking out more, and that's exactly what we're looking to do. However, maybe it might be making it a little bit too hollow. So I can come in here to any one of these filter nodes. Four doesn't look like it's doing anything, so I can just go ahead and turn it off. One might be cutting too much, or it may be too broad of a Q value, so I can easily come in here and change the percentage, maybe reduce it. And another way to kind of reduce the effect this is having is coming to the dry wet. And as I pull this down, you'll see that these become less and less. And that is essentially all you need to do to remove frequency masking that M Autodynamic has picked out from the two analyzed signals that you fed into it. There's also a smoothness button. If you change the smoothness, you'll get broader lumps here. And then you just need to hit separate again and it's added four. And you can see it's actually taken out a bigger chunk. So that's actually too much smoothing. And if we bring it down, let's come into settings and actually just turn it down to three. Uh, hit OK, and then hit separate again. And you'll see here, so we could actually probably do with two. I can just get rid of this third one. And here we go. Again, pull back on the dry wet. And we've just helped the mix along very quickly, very easily. And you can imagine as you start doing this with more and more instruments, you're really carving space for what for whatever instrument you're trying to carve space for surgically. And of course you can go further by adding these as dynamics. You can go further by adding pitch following. And I'm gonna get into all of that in the upcoming videos. Uh, the next couple of videos are going to be about external sidechain routing, pitch tracking, and also the EQ match function rather than the separate function. So there's a lot coming up. If you have this plugin or if you're interested in this plugin, I highly suggest watching all four of these videos. They're really gonna help you out, either make a decision or use this plugin to its highest ability. Anyway, I'm Joshua Casper here for Plugin Boutique. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.